Welcome to the Success in Africa podcast with Dr. Modupe, your weekly dose of leadership vitamins to make you successful in Africa. Hello and welcome to the Success in Africa podcast episode 27. My name is Dr. Modupe Taylor Pierce and I am a scholar and a practitioner of leadership and organizational development. Simply put, I study what makes people successful. I have been studying this for three decades with a particular focus on people in Africa. And in this podcast, I will share stories, lessons, and insights about people having success in Africa. Why this podcast? Because I am sick and tired of Africa being the poorest continent in the world. We are blessed with the greatest resource, young people. Africa will soon have the largest number of working age people in the world and when these people achieve success, Africa's wealth will be unparalleled. Why? Because I don't know of too many Africans whose goal in life it is to die poor. You see, success in life is simply the achievement of a predetermined goal. Whether that goal is owning a house and a car, creating employment for a thousand people, or transforming your country into a high-income country, this podcast has been created to help you to achieve it. So, if you are serious about achieving success in Africa, I want you to subscribe to this channel. If you like the video after you've watched it, please click the like button. This podcast is brought to you courtesy of BCA Leadership, the largest leadership enhancement company in Africa. If you have questions that you want me to answer after watching this video, log on to BCA Online, the link is on the screen, and post your questions there. That is where I will respond to your questions. Today I'm starting a four-part series on governance good governance. You may have heard the terms governance or corporate governance or board of directors or advisory board or even simply just board. These are all terminology used to describe the building blocks of what is known as governance. Most companies or organizations have boards. These are a group of people, usually called directors, who collectively form the board. In many countries, the law requires you, if you want to register certain types of companies, for example, a corporation, to have board members who will be listed in the registration documents. However, there are also certain types of companies that you can register which do not require you to have a board. One such example is a sole proprietorship. Again, the laws are different in different countries, so I'm speaking in general about what it is for many countries in Africa, but it may not be the same for all. The reality is that even when having the board is a legal requirement, the fact that a company has people listed as board members does not mean it has good governance. Just as the fact that a country has policemen and judges does not mean that it has functioning law and order, the fact that a company has board members does not mean it has a functioning governance. Over the next four weeks, I will share stories about four successful Africans for us to learn from their journeys and experiences about governance and how to leverage it to achieve success. Today's session is titled, Who Needs a Board Anyway? I titled it this way because I run into many entrepreneurs and founders who are grappling with this question. In previous episodes, you have heard me talk about the fact that it takes a village to raise a child and creating a new business or organization from scratch is like raising a child from birth, and that business needs its own village. The board is a key part of that village. 
Today, we will illustrate this by looking into the journey of one of the most amazing banking entrepreneurs of Southern Africa, Dr. Thompson Pinganjira. Dr. Thompson Pingajira hails from Malawi, and for much of his adult life, he followed a rather predictable, if not unremarkable, career path, which would not have earned him a place in this podcast if it had not changed later in life. He grew up in Malawi and was educated in Malawi, earning bachelor's and master's degrees in local universities. He then worked for a number of years as an accountant for various companies, including Deloitte, uh, Blanta Printing, CFAO, uh, National Bank of Malawi, to name a few. And over the years of his career, he achieved increasingly greater responsibility in finance departments. In 2000, he became the CEO of the newly formed Malawi Stock Exchange. And it was while he was the CEO of the Malawi Stock Exchange that Thompson recognized that there was an unmet need in the financial market that he could fill. He put together his business plan and registered First Discount House, which later became FDH Bank. Despite his decades of experience in accounting and finance that propelled him to become the CEO of the Malawi Stock Exchange, when he, Thompson went around searching for investors to invest in his new venture, he was roundly rejected. However, Thompson had learned, thanks to the village that supported him, that in the world of successful entrepreneurship, the founder has to be the rainmaker and the founder cannot allow herself or himself to accept no for an answer. So, what did he do? He approached the head office of one of the very same companies in Malawi that had rejected him for investment. And this head office in South Africa agreed that this was a worthwhile investment. FDH Bank was born. From the start, Dr. Mpinganjira knew that he wanted to build a legacy that would outlive and outlast him. And he knew that he needed help to ensure that this bank was successful. Of course, he had a good reason to want it to be successful because he had to put up his own home as collateral for the investment. So he did not just recruit top quality people to serve on his board of directors, but he also as he puts it, he succumbed to their will as the board, even though he was the majority shareholder in the company. There were many times when he disagreed with the decisions of the board, but he respected the board enough to heed their guidance, to implement their decisions as a dutiful CEO. When I asked him about this, during the recently concluded Made in Africa Leadership Conference that was held in Nairobi in June 2024, he explained to me that he knew that it was in the plurality of opinions and perspectives that the right solutions would be found and he wanted to protect the company that he was building, this bank, from his own blind spots. Dr. Mpinganjira explains that the board was a source of advice, credibility, accountability, risk management, networks, and encouragement during the years that he was building up the bank. Today, FDH Bank is one of the largest banks in Malawi, and Dr. Thompson is, regarding, is regarded as one of the richest men in Malawi. He has retired from FDH Bank and has invested in another venture, this time in the food production industry under the brand Ekaya Group of Companies. Ekaya Farms and Foods specializes in sustainable animal farming. 
When asked how he chooses the industries in which to invest, Dr. Thompson says he knows that no matter what the crisis, people will not stop eating or needing a safe place to keep their money. And that's why he has invested in the food production industries and the financial services and banking industries. What can we learn from Dr. Thompson and his journey with FDH Bank? We can learn that good governance matters and that every founder needs a functional and functioning board to give their fledgling business the best chance of survival. Dr. Thompson could have been excused for thinking he did not need a board. Not only was he a very experienced accountant and financial professional when he started FDH, he had also been the CEO of the Malawi Stock Exchange. He was probably more experienced in banking than most of the people who sat on his board. And yet, he subjected himself to their oversight and became accountable to them. He could have simply had them on his board and ignored them or sidelined them and kept them quiet with substantial sitting fees while not following their advice. But he did not. And by his own testimony, the governance of FDH Bank is the biggest reason for the success of FDH Bank. And also, it's the biggest reason for Dr. Thompson being able to retire from this bank without the bank falling apart. So, who needs a board? Every founder needs a board. Every company needs good governance. Every organization needs a group of people with experience and independence who collectively protect the organization from the blind spots of the founder or CEO and also provide credibility, advice, encouragement, accountability, risk management, and oversight. It does not make you less of a leader to have a functioning board. It makes you a better leader. This brings us to the end of our podcast today. Next week, we will continue with our series on the subject of governance and explore two different kinds of boards, advisory boards and statutory boards. Thank you for listening or watching. I hope you've learned something useful from today's podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and like this video. Please tell your friends about it. Together, we can transform our beloved continent. See you next week. Tomorrow belongs to those people who prepare for it today. See you next week. Thank you.